and here is my cream sweet cream or sweet corn casserole 14 little circles out of this oh my gosh that's two teaspoons of cinnamon and here we are i didn't think it was gonna pop up that easily i gotta get to chopping those onions and you know what i forgot on my plate a piece of sausage and oh my gosh these are delicious isn't that cute and there that's the finished one i wish i had videotaped in there Howdy everyone, this is Trisha and welcome to my channel. Today I will be continuing a special Christmas for my mom. This is a two-part uh, series. In the first one I did this uh, Meco, oh sorry, Deco mesh wreath that you see right over here in my mother's colors. And so I'm going to continue that with a top hat. So this is my special Christmas for my mom top hat on a candlestick. Yes, or candle holder. All right, so this is the can the top hat that I previously did before, as you can see right here. And I did this in my colors, and I've shown this to my mom, and my mom thought it was beautiful, and she was all excited about it. So I said, well, I'm going to do one for her. So a lot of the materials that I used to create this wreath, and if you watch this video, which is previous to this one right now, uh, you'll, you'll see, you have seen what I used and I have all these materials in front of me because I did have a lot of leftovers and I have a couple of items that are new to this. So basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using some mesh and here I've got some white, oops, sorry, some whites and some golds, very simple. I've got some tools that I've also, I'm also going to incorporate in that. And I've got some gold, some antique silver, some off-white, but I also purchased uh, some new tool. And this is about a half a yard of this pink and this little kind of a creamy color that I'd like to incorporate. So somewhere I will inc incorporate some of these and not all of them. And of course, I still have my ribbons. I've got this gold, a cream, this one with a garland. This beautiful one with the snowflakes, which brought in the pink that I wanted to do for my mom. And also the stripe one, which also brings in a lot of that pink. I also have a bow that I had already made in my creating handmade bows. And if you want to see that video, I'll go ahead and link that below. I'll go ahead and link that one up there and the one for the top hat as well. So you can see all of those. Yes, unless you've already seen them, then great. Okay, so I made this bow and it's a little crushed because I've been throwing it around. So anyway, I'm going to be recycling the ribbon from this bow because we really have no need for it and uh, I only did it for the video but I also want the flower that's on here because it matches the ones that are on the wreath and my intention was to use it for my mom's top hat so I gotta get it off of here I'm also going to be using uh, some felt to create my hat like I did the last one but I use black felt in this case I'm going to be using some white now I decided that uh, I wasn't just going to just leave it white felt I decided to go a little bit above and beyond and I got some satin fabric and I got a yard of this cream colored off white whatever you want to call it ivory satin fabric and it's not an expensive fabric at all and I got this at Hobby Lobby most of my supplies that I've shown you so far I've gotten from the Hobby Lobby a couple of the mesh I already had that the deco mesh I already had that from previous years okay here's some ornaments that I also have and I'm also going to recycle I use these in my wreath I've got some satin and uh, some kind of metallic -y, shiny balls that I'm going to use but I also have this little packet got it from Hobby Lobby so I'm going to use some of those and uh, I have one leftover snowflake from this packet of six that I got at the Dollar Tree and this has gone far and beyond my expectations I'm using these little snowflakes I've gotten them in all sizes and I just love them so I'm going to be using that one I also got from the Dollar Tree this beautiful angel wings and I did use those in the wreath I may use them in this I may not because I also found this beautiful angel and she's got a little trumpet and I got this from Hobby Lobby this is uh this was $3.99 but I got it at 40% off so as you can see that's not a bad deal at all so I may use this one maybe both I don't know I tend to kind of kind of feel things as I go okay I also had gotten a, a nine foot garland from Hobby Lobby and I've been cutting from it so I've still got some pieces and I do still have the long uh, piece over here so I'm going to be using some garland for that and also some a greenery that matches the greenery that I've used on there and you saw the flower that I'm going to use and these uh, berries that I've also got left over that I also got uh, from Hobby Lobby and uh, I used those in that but the, the bo most beautiful part I think well right now it's the most beautiful part until I get the whole hat done but it's the candle holder look at this it's so beautiful with silver 
and crystal. I would have liked it if it had been in gold. I really would have preferred that, but silver is just fine. I'm going to use this to build my top hat on. So I am going to be using some styrofoam, which you don't see here in front of us. If you're curious, I got, did I say I got it from Ross? It was only $8.99. Uh, they had a shorter one and I was about to grab that one. Then I saw this one. It was just a couple dollars more. And I said, oh, I'm going for the big one. The shorter one was in gold. So I was kind of torn, but I went for this one. Okay. Also, because I want to give it a sort of a vintage, a shabby chic kind of look to my uh, hat. I have pulled out my collection of laces and trims. And this one I've got in these boxes. I'll pull one out just so you get an idea of what I have. Look at that. Little beautiful uh, laces. Some of these have some pearls on them. I'll pull it up a little closer to the camera there. Little pearls. I will be bringing the camera down so that you can see um, what I'm doing and see things closer. Um, let me see. I've got some whites over here. Let me pull one out so you can see here. Just some examples. Now you just need little scraps here and there uh, of lace. Just go by yourself maybe half a yard or a yard depending on how much of that particular lace you want to use or unless you want to use, uh, you know, little bits of uh, different ones and get yourself half yard pieces. And that'll be good enough for this particular size of top hat. We're not going to overdo it on the lace. <laughs> Maybe we will. I don't know. I, I don't like to overdo things too much, but when you come, when it comes to shabby chic or vintage looking, you kind of have to do that. And I really do like shabby chic and uh, my mom loves vintage. So I'm kind of combining the two. I don't know how shabby or how chic or how vintage it'll look to you, but it will to me. And I hope that you will like it. So let's get to creating this. Uh, I will need some tools. My glue gun with glue sticks. I'm going to be using my wire cutters. I'm going to be using scissors. I will be using floral wire, perhaps even some chenille stems. And I've got my little pliers just in case. And um, whatever else I can think of, I'll let you know as we get along. So let's get to crafting. All right, so the first thing that I've done is I've removed any tags that may be on the item, whether it's underneath. In this case, they were on here on the side. And I've taken this product that's called Goo Gone. And uh, that's helped to remove a lot of the adhesive that uh, was on there from the stickers and any stubborn stickers that I wasn't able to pull off easily. So we're going to go ahead and put that to the side and we're going to go ahead and build our top hat. Now I've gone ahead and I've already measured the other top hat that I, that I made so that I can make this pretty much the same size. Let me get the fabric and pull it over to the side. Got all that goo gone on my hands. Okay. We're going to take these little tags off. We're going to cut out uh, the circles first on the hat. Now the uh, bottom circle, which is the largest one, which is going to be the brim of the hat, uh, on the other one is about 11 inches in diameter. And this is a 12 by 18, I believe. Let's see if I'm correct. I've done this so many times, I don't know why I can't keep that in my head. 12 by 18, yes, okay. So this is a 12 by 18, so I'm just gonna measure up 11 inches. And then I'll do the same this way. I'm gonna go ahead and make my line first. I'm just using a pencil. The pencil works just fine on felt. 11. Okay, so then I'm just marking a square is what I am doing in case you're curious as to what I'm doing. Okay. Can you see that pencil line on there? Creating a square? Okay, so then I'm gonna, just going to cut out, cut this out. Now I could use a uh, matte cutting board and a rotary cutter to cut this out and do a nicer job. But because I'm going to round it off, I don't need to have these straight square lines. And of course, if you don't have a rotary cutter and a mat to work with, just use your craft scissors to cut this. And I've done this already several times in my other videos. So basically this is sort of a repetitive process. So maybe you want to fast forward this part where I'm doing the, uh, the hat or building of the hat and then just go on to the decorating of it. So maybe uh, someone will figure that out and say, hey, this is where it actually starts. And they'll put that on the bottom. Okay. Here we go. I'm just rounding it off as best as I can. I'm not doing that great of a job rounding it off yet because I'm going to build my hat. And once I have my hat, then I can see and then I can trim and do some trimming. Okay. Now the top part of the, um, the hat, the part that closes off 
the cylinder part that goes up here. That was uh, five and a half inches in diameter. So let me see if I have enough here to work with. And I do. I'm going to do that then. Five and a half. Five and a half. Mark that with my pencil. And then upward. Five and a half. Well, I didn't need to mark that many. Okay, so I can mark my little straight lines here, meeting, matching up all them little dashes that I made. Okay, so now I've got a little square here. That's a five and a half by five and a half. And I'm gonna trim that off. I wasn't sure if I used three pieces of felt or if I used just two, uh, but it looks like I just used just two by the way this is going. I'm gonna save this little square in case I decide that maybe I wanted this to be a little bit bigger. But no, I just want it to be the same as the other one, more or less, I think it was a really great size. Okay, so I'm going to get a second one so I can create my cylinder. And the height of my cylinder was uh, anywhere from 6.5 to 7 inches. I couldn't get it in there in a well enough to measure. So I'm going to go ahead and measure 7 for now. Because I'm going to be putting some laces on it. And I wanted it maybe just that little tad bit taller. And you can just make it as... You can make it any size that you want. But if you want to go ahead and repeat what I'm doing... Those are the measurements that I'm using. So what I did is I'm marking seven inches all the way across my 18 inch length because I don't recall exactly how much, how much I used for the cylinder. So we're just gonna cut one long piece and we're using the most length as we can. And that was 18 inches. And just cutting it as best as I can, saving these little scraps. And here we go. And I've got one sheet left over, so we only needed one, but I'm going to keep it just in case there's any mistakes. And they're not expensive, so they're okay to, you know, buy extra. You never know what you need felt for. Or you could just make a little tiny little mini hat with, with your leftovers. Oh, and then I've been doing so many of these hats that I decided that I wanted to make little miniature little ornaments. And, uh, but I decided that I'm not going to do a video for that because I've, I've done a hat so many times in my videos that I don't think you needed to see me do it in miniature size, but I will show you the little miniature hat if I remember before this is all over. Uh, so you can see what I did. Okay. So I've got that. Oh, <laughs> I was supposed to be rounding this off and for some reason I grabbed the big one and I started rounding it off even more. Oh boy. Okay. So just round off the edges as best as you can. And it doesn't have to be perfectly round because we're going to be decorating it and a lot of that's going to be covered so it's very forgiving. So the next thing I want to do is I want to form a cylinder but I'm not going to glue it yet because I have some satin fabric that I want to cover this with. So I'm just going to give myself a more or less, you know, how big or how long this piece should be. And I always want to make sure that it's either the size of my top circle, the smaller one, or just a little bit smaller because then that can always be trimmed if it's a little too big. Okay, so I'm looking at my cylinder and I'm going to go ahead and keep this 18 inches because I'm probably going to trim off about an inch or maybe a little bit more and just leave enough so that I can glue it. You know, I can overlap it at least half an inch and glue it, but I'm going to leave it like this for now because it seems to be a pretty good size. So the next thing I want to do is I want to now cut the same out of my, my satin. Now, at first I wanted to get like really fancy with my satin, but then I decided that, you know what, I think it's gonna be just too much instruction and I could just save it for maybe another tutorial for some other time. I don't know, what do I do, what do I do? My idea was to maybe uh, do some little pleats on my, on my satin fabric as I put it on here so they would have pleats all the way down, but I feel like that's just gonna be too much trouble and too much, too much explaining and maybe I don't know, maybe some of you might find that a little bit too, too much. Okay, I'm just going to cut off a piece that's just a little bit bigger or wider, I should say, and longer off, obviously, off of my yard of fabric here so that I have this long strip. Let me open that up. I have this long strip. And I've got my 18 inches here, as I mentioned before. And I'm just going to fold this over like so and then also on the other side. And then I'm just gonna trim them, okay? And one side I'm gonna leave longer than the other. That's a side that I'm not gonna cut off. And I'll explain that a bit. Let me move it over as much as I can to this edge. And I'm going to 
leave it about an inch, an inch and a half longer. So the fabric, you're gonna cut it, if you're, if you're cutting the same size as I am, which is 18 by five and a half, the fabric you're going to cut it, uh, well, 19 and a half or so, or 20 inches if you wanna do that. And uh, the width would be about eight inches, okay? So just put it on the edge, and then I'm gonna put a, a glue of, or a bead of glue, and I've got my little fan going. So if you hear a little noise in the background, that's what it is. I am just so hot. I'm in Texas, so whew, even our fall is hot. Well, our winter as well, but oh well. Anyway, uh, I've just been so hot lately. Okay. <laughs> oh, wouldn't that be nice if it was a different kind of hot? Okay, well, there we go. All I did was just cover it with some satin because I love the look of that for my hat. So what do you think? It's super easy. The reason that I told you to leave a little bit extra here is because once we have this at the size that we want, okay, I'm going to fold this over on this edge, okay, and glue that down. But once we have this over, that finished edge will be my seam. And I wanted to have that nice little fold over as it did up here, okay? Not a lot of that's going to get hidden, but you know, what the heck. Let's just do it nice, right, while we're at it. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue, seal that up, and then I'm going to fold it down. I need to put some more glue on my glue stick there. Okay, let's get some glue in there. And anything that we need to trim it, trim, we'll trim it off this side where I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't fold it over. And that doesn't matter because it's going to be underneath, so you're not going to see that. Okay, let's move along. Now we want to do this, the big circle. So let's put our fabric also with a pretty side facing down. We'll put our, our little circle. Let's do on the other end where I was cutting from instead of this one. Okay, it doesn't matter, but you know, what the heck, right? Okay, so now I just wanted to overlap again. Just a few bits. Now, remember I said we were going to trim it rounder. And once we've covered it with fabric, you really can't do that. So let me go ahead and decide right now. We're just going to try and round it off as much as we can. And we're just going to have to be real careful with this, okay? And there we go. Now, we could put some laces on the edge, so... That'll cover that raw edge. Hmm. 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 Let's go ahead and cover them for now, and then if we have to trim it, no big deal. Okay. I'm going to cut it just about a couple of inches bigger here. Okay. Okay. Let's take that. Let's move that out of the way. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I know it's all white on white, and you can't really see this. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a dot of glue right in the center here. And that's not even going to show because that's going to get covered up. Just a dot of glue, a little swirly bit of glue there. Put down the uh, felt circle, press it down so that the fabric won't move around on you because the next thing you're going to do is you're going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to round off the edges as well. Just round it off a little bit as much as you can, okay? Leaving about, you know, one and a half to two inches of slack. Okay, a raw edge, whatever you want to call it. All the way around. Now, the trick to folding over anything that's curved around is to make some little cuts. And otherwise, you know, if you try to fold it in like that, you might have a big old lumpy mess and everything looks really bad and whatever. Okay, so the trick to doing that is to cut slits into the fabric. See this? little slits like that you're gonna go all the way around and do that so I'm gonna go ahead and do that so you don't have to watch all of that I'm gonna do that and then what I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna start putting some glue down and folding these little little edges over like that so as soon as I have another little cut I'll fold it over and glue it down and so forth and so on all the way around and I'll come back before I'm finished doing that all right so I've gone ahead and I've already glued a lot of this together so I'm just gonna finish this up and I can see that I need glue on my glue gun. I should have looked at that before I started this up again, but okay, here we go. Now, if you're not gonna cover yours with any fabric and you've already seen the other videos on how to build this, again, skip over all this part and just go straight to the decorating so you can get a new idea of how this hat 
could have been done or can be done I could have but can be done in many ways besides the um, the one that I did now I'm just gonna let that glue dry there look at that so there's just a little bit of glue right there but there's gonna be a cylinder coming up from it right here and that's gonna cover that up so anyway I went ahead and I did the same to the part that's gonna go on the top of the hat now I did say that once we create our cylinder and if it's a little bit smaller we can trim this off and we can do that but I went ahead and I did it this way just in case the size is just fine and I don't have to do any trimming but if I do it's no big deal because I'm gonna be putting some lace here on there now on this bottom one because it is gonna be facing down and I really don't want to see a lot of this I'm gonna go ahead and put a circle of satin just to cover a little bit of it okay just in case it gets seen but we are going to be making an opening on the hat and I will sh explain that in just a bit I really just need glue on the edge here I don't know why I'm putting it all over the place just making a mess just making a big old mess okay so you try to do this a little bit a little bit you know more carefully than what I'm doing because you know I'm trying to rush for the video. I'm trying not to put too much in it. I'm trying to make it shorter, but you know what? I still want it to look nice for my mom. And I know that in the end it's going to look really nice. So this part I'm not too concerned about because a lot of it is going to get covered. Okay, so that's all I did. I just put some fabric there just in case. Okay? So this might get trimmed. This might get trimmed. And here we have our little piece here that might get trimmed. Okay, let's go ahead and put them together. I went ahead and I put a, put a black poster board. I hope this is, this is helpful to you. I'm going to take this and turn this around this way. With this little ugly part upward we're going to take our our uh, long piece here a little cylinder form the cylinder if it helps you to look at it this way go ahead i think i kind of like this particular size and here we go it's a lot of eyeballing to figure it out it's and that's why this gets trimmed okay so I'm gonna go for I'm gonna overlap it about an inch here when I glue it back glue it together and I've left that at that length that I that I had which is 18 inches and I'm gonna overlap it by an inch and I hope that I'm right <laughs> with the size that it shows yes it pretty much covers it there we go. That's good. Okay, just make sure this is down on here well enough. I see that it lifts up just a tiny bit right here, so I'm just going to put a little glue there. Okay, so just create your cylinder. And then we're going to put glue on the edge here, and then put this part on there. But before I do this part, I'm going to put it on here that way I can kind of uh, eyeball it and kind of try to make it as, as centered as I can. And I'm not going to worry too much about making it centered because I'm going to be putting lots of decoration on here and a lot of it's going to get covered. So I'm not going to worry about it too much. So let's go ahead and just try to make this as circular as we can. Okay. So there's some little areas where you got to have to do a little bit of bending. Okay. Now, I have chosen this to be the bottom because I got a little bit of glue here and that's going to get covered with some ribbon, so I'm choosing that part. So I'm just going to put some glue. Now you could use like an E6000, for example, that type of a glue to put this all together, but I would still use a little bit of the hot glue because uh, that gives you a, uh, a bond while you're waiting for the E6000 to dry. But we're working with fabric, felt, a lot of floral, you know, items and ribbon just fabric so the hot glue gun works just fine for that so I'm just gonna try and get this on here as centered as I can and if I have to slide it a little bit and some of that glue shows I'm not gonna worry because I'm gonna cover that up with garland and flowers and ribbon and such okay there we go that's that part of the tat okay and now we want to do this part but before I do that I wanted to make a little hole down here at the bottom, which I should have done before. And the reason that I'm going to make a little hole is because I'm going to be putting it on my candle holder, which will have a piece of styrofoam. But instead of just laying it flat on top of my candle holder, I want it to have a little bit of a tilt, and I want it to go in there. So I want the styrofoam to have some room in there to be able to get in there. So I've got my X-Acto knife, and I'm just going to reach underneath, and I'm going to put this little bit on here because I don't want to cut my... I don't want to cut this... Uh, 
what is this poster board <laughs> or my table so I just got the little the ruler underneath or get a cutting mat underneath there or something and I'm just gonna use my exacto knife to cut into there and I'm marking there we go that's all I need to do there we go that's good enough so now that I've made a, a slit a cut I can cut into my hat and just feel around to where I get to the edge forth now when I did the other hat all I did was fold these guys in and then I just left it like that I didn't bother about oh well you know let me trim that off so I'm not gonna trim it off I'm just gonna cut as close to the edge as I can and leave that kind of a bit of a tightness there so that when I put it onto um, my styrofoam It'll be a little tight. So there you go. That's all I did. I made a hole down there. Okay. Okay. So now that we've got our hat made, and I want to put it on my candle holder, but I've got to put styrofoam on there. One thing that I didn't mention that I'm going to be using uh, as well is going to be uh, some floral pins or U-pins. Some people call them S-pins. So I'm going to be using that also. So if you have some of that, grab some. Okay, so we're back, and I think you have a good view here of what I'm doing here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some styrofoam up here. But what I want to do is I want to trim the styrofoam to fit within the side of my candle because it has like a little bit of a lip here on the edge, and I want it to fit right in there. So I'm going to just trim it. I can use a little craft knife, which I forgot to grab. But I'm just going to use my scissors and just trim the little edges here. Just make a mess basically <laughs> okay and there we go that's good enough I can do it this way that's good enough I'm gonna glue that down so lots of glue on here lots and lots of it because it's gonna be moving around on you and uh, you don't want it to come undone okay a larger surface of that on there. I'm just going to kick this off to the floor, sweep it off later. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, and clean this space here so you can see things nicer. We're at my hat here. Okay, so uh, the way that I'm going to do this is uh, you're going to be looking at it uh, from the front, and I'm going to be looking at it from the back. So I've got the seam on my hat right here, and I want that at the back. So I'm just going to insert it just a tiny bit into my, my styrofoam. And as I said, I wanted it to have a bit of a tilt. And I can see right here that I'm going to need to move that camera even further or tilt it upwards so that you can see what I'm doing up here. Because down here, I'm not going to be doing any work. So anyway, um, I'm just going to tilt it a little bit like that. Make sure those little pieces of the fabric are going in there. And the way that I'm going to keep it in place is by using some U-pins. Um, now, normally what I would do is I would just stick the U-pin through all this and get it in here. But I have a feeling because of the layers of uh, satin and some of the glue that's down here that I might have a little bit of trouble. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a piece of, or rather two U-pins into the styrofoam right on the edge here. But I'm not going to stick them all the way in. I'm going to have about half an inch sticking out. I'm going to put one on this side and one on this side, and then I'm going to put glue on the hat and the U-pin. So this is, the pin goes in there, but then it'll also be glued to the hat, so hold it in there. So just some glue on the, on the tip first to insert them. Do you see the pin in there? Okay, now where that pin is, I'm now going to put some glue. So the fabric and so forth grab onto that. And I'm going to make a little bit of a mess, but that's okay. We're going to cover all that up. Okay, now I'm going to do another one. And a little bit on the opposite side of that. Push it up because I don't want it to come down that much. Okay, that will also keep my hat from going down. And then on the other edge over here, it's touching a little bit of the, the edge of the candle holder right there. So I put some glue to glue that down. And that should hold. Okay? And there's the hat so far. 
on here. Now this looks really tall, but we're going to decorate it so it's not going to look that, the, this part of the hat looks really tall, kind of unusually tall, and kind of straight. It should come out a little bit for a top hat, but in order not to suffer any, you know, trouble making it, I've just not done it straight and it looks really pretty when it's already done and finished. So let me go ahead and move this camera. I'm going to go ahead and take apart that uh, bow that I told you about because I'm going to use recycle that ribbon for my hat and uh, I'll be back. All right, so I'm back and um, I've taken apart uh, the bow because I wanted to remove the uh, flower. So here's the flower that I'm going to be using on my hat instead of leaving it on the bow. And I'm going to recycle a lot of that bow, maybe put it back together, but into maybe like a smaller version for the top of my mom's little Christmas tree. And uh, I'm going to use some of the bits that I used in it to decorate this one here. So also the piece of garland that I showed you, I may cut some more from the uh, new uh, garland that I got, but I still have some scraps from a leftover piece of garland. So I cut this piece and I've got, I went ahead and I kind of measured it around, like I curved it around and I measured it around to cover this styrofoam. And this piece ended up being from just the wired part, the wired part, not the tips of this tear. So this little bit here, this length is about eight inches long. So that's about how much I cut to put down under here and cover that up. Now, one thing I wanted to do before I went uh, went ahead and I was have talked about trimming this to fit the cylinder part of here. Now I said if it was close enough, you didn't have to do any trimming because we're gonna cover it up with some lace. But I've been looking at it from every angle and I've decided that you know what, if it's gonna need some trimming, and since I am gonna cut um, I am going to cover it. I'm not going to worry about how the edge looks. So in this area, especially here in the front, it's it's bigger by kind of quite a bit. So I'm going to trim that off. So I'm just going to go around. Now, once I do that, this piece of fabric, because I didn't glue it up on the top here, I glued it, uh, I tucked it under and glued it down. So what I'm going to have to do now is I'm going to have to go under here and uh, wherever it lifts up, I'll just put some glue and glue it down and there we go okay so i've glued that down it doesn't look all that attractive you can iron your fabric if you want i think it'll be fine because i'm going to put some flowers on there um i'm going to see if i have a little bird because i used to red a bird on uh, that one and i know i've got another red bird now my mom does have pinks and burgundy so maybe the bird the red bird will be okay because um these berries uh some of them are red, a little bit of green and some burgundy on there. So and since I'm going to use these, a little red bird might match just fine. But I'm going to go ahead and see if I do have something that I can use. Okay, enough of that. Let's get to decorating it. We're going to put this garland to cover that piece of styrofoam from underneath. Okay, so what we want to do is we're going to use our greening pins here. Or greenery pins or U-pins or S-pins or whatever you want to call them. And we're going to attach our garland with this. So let's go ahead and put that right here in the center area back here. You can put some glue on the little tips again to hold it in. And I'll just bring the garland, twist it. And then I'm going to twist the side also to curve it a little bit more. To come hugging around that piece of styrofoam underneath. Now what I did with the other one, in order to make this, because uh, I really like the, the garden underneath. It almost looks like it's somebody's head and hair or something coming out of there. I don't know. I just thought that it looked like that. Looked like that. What I did with the other one is I also took another little piece. And I'm going to say about... Maybe three inches of it. I'm gonna cut right there. A little piece about that big. I am now going to attach that to right here, just to make it fuller right here. See how it goes in a lot, and then you see this bottom of the hat here. I want to cover as much as I can, so I'm gonna put this right along here. Wait, what am I doing? I'm thinking that I'm gonna put lace. On. <laughs> I automatically reacted with my glue gun. Okay, so I'm gonna put little bit of this, put it around the wire, 
and stick as much of it as I can into the styrofoam, not all the way in because I don't want to push this all the way in. So then what I can do is I can take a piece from the other garland, a little branch, and twist it with this little piece in a couple of different places here just to make sure it is holding on. Just making sure. There we go. And then just kind of perk up your greenery so that it's kind of coming out. If you want to curl it sideways a little bit, that's fine. Bring some forward under here. So that's what you're doing, okay? That's what you're forming. Okay, so now I want to put a trim, and I have shown you that beautiful trim. Uh, where is it? There it is, right over here. I have shown you this one, and I think I have this beaded one, and I like that beaded one for the edge. Now, a lot of it might get covered up because I am going to put some greenery here, but I still want to use this one. It's got some pearls, and I want to use that right on the edge here, and I kind of want to use it on the top, but I also want to put this here on here. So I'm going to cut a piece that's just enough to go around. Yep, right about there. And I'm going to carefully trim it. Okay. And you can use any lace you have. Now, on this bottom part, I want to put ribbon, and I want to use these uh, this gold one. Here it is, right here. I want to use this gold one down here, like so. And again, I'm going to be putting stuff under here, so I don't want to put it too low. So I'm going to cut it just enough to go all the way around and overlap just a tiny bit. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, put a little bit of glue. Now, I'm not going to line it to the very edge of the bottom because, like I said, I'm going to put some other things and um, I don't want it to cover a lot of the ribbon. So, just lift it up a little bit. I went about half an inch or so up, upward. Okay. Now, this is a sheer ribbon, so when I put that glue down and I brought the other end, I was able to just push the other end down. Otherwise, put some more glue and then get that other end to adhere. All right. So, then I like this striped one. For, to come around the, the hat as well. So I'm gonna cut a piece, it's just enough to put on there. And I'm gonna center this on this gold ribbon that I've put down. What I think would look really pretty on here too, if you wanna give it a little bit of a rustic shabby chic look, maybe some, um, and I have the word burlap. <laughs> you can use some burlap ribbon instead if you wanted to put that element in here. It down. There we go. Isn't that pretty? Just that's looking pretty just like that. Oh my goodness. Okay. I want to keep making it pretty, so I'm gonna keep decorating. So I'm gonna put this right along here. And because it doesn't have a straight edge, it's gonna pop up a little bit. And I really wanted to use this little pearly one right on the top, but I don't want to cover that. Well, we'll see. But I'm gonna have it because it has see how it's got little loops on here. I'm gonna have those be up just a bit above so they're up on up, up top of there and then I'm just going to glue this on okay and anyway you can see that right there and when I'm done with it I am going to bring the camera close up so you can see all of this I'm going to go ahead and use this one on the edge here and I'm going to do the same thing put glue on the edges and put a little bit at a time as I go around okay so that's all I'm going to do so I'll be back when that is done all right, so as you can see, I've finished putting this uh, beaded lace, little pearl lace um, trim. It's really a trim uh, around the edge of my hat here at the bottom, and I think it looks really pretty. Okay, so then I got this little piece of uh, garland up here because I went ahead and I measured a piece, and this is about eight inches or so, I'm going to say. Yeah, it's about eight inches or nine or so. And uh, what I've done is I've just kind of fluffed it up a little bit and curved it to fit on this here. Now, I'm not going to be able to use pins to pin that down, so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some glue right here, and I've just turned it around to face me. You're looking at the back of it right here. And uh, I'm just going to put plenty of glue down there so that it catches on, and I'm going to push it as close as I can to the edge there. Okay, plenty of glue. And then just put that right in there, push it in, so it catches that hot glue. There we go. 
just like that. I don't want to put it all the way around because I don't want to cover the, the ribbon here. I just want to add an accent of greenery right there. And I may even put a little bit more over here. I'm not really sure. Okay, but I do have these stems, and I've got a piece that I've cut from um, the other arrangement that I've made. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and cut somewhere in the middle so I have a shorter stem of this pine, these long needles. So now I've got two pieces of it, like that. And some of these little pieces will fall off, and that's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and tuck one of these right there. I think that looks really pretty right there. So I'm going to put lots of glue in here. And slide that. Kind of trying to tuck it into that pine underneath and, and in there. And this drops a lot of little, little crystally kind of, I don't know what they are, little, supposed to look like frost on these. Pine, but look at how pretty that looks already coming out. Okay, this other piece, I'm going to put it back here, coming out like that. I think that would look interesting. And I still have another another uh, piece of this uh, type of uh, pine greenery. So I'm going to have that one come out the top right there. That looks really pretty. Yes, I think it does. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put another one coming out from the back here uh, with this other piece that I have here. Slide it in there and catch that styrofoam underneath there. Oh, that looks that looks good. That looks good. That looks good. I love it. Okay, I'm gonna put a bow right here, and that's gonna hang over right here and have some tails coming down right here. So I'm not putting anything there, and I'm gonna put these on the top. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, I'm gonna use this one back here to kind of uh, mimic all of that beautiful pine back here as well okay there you go can you see that okay all these little bits I'm gonna use them so anything that you take off don't toss it away because you're gonna use it I'm gonna angle this a little bit going downward because I don't want everything to just shoot upward see what I did is I angled it to kind of go this way okay so now I'm gonna put the flower right here because I think it's gonna it's just going to really do a, a nice finishing touch. Now the flower was in a, a like a, a long kind of a stem and uh, all these, uh, not a really long stem, but it had a stem to it. And then all these pieces were separately um, on, on their own little wire. But then I ended up gluing them all together. So that's what, what's going on here with this right now. So I'm just taking it apart a little bit. This part can stay. It's got the, the leaf on there. Flower, little 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 stem that looks like little miniature pomegranates or something. Okay, this is the front of the hat, if you're looking at it from that, because this is the way that I want to set it. So this is on a backdrop, maybe a wall back here. So I want this flower right in here, okay? And I want to be able to see it from the front. And you'll be seeing it a little bit from the side. It's okay, we'll, we'll fix it as we go along. But I want it to be seen, so I'm going to direct it mostly towards the front of the hat. If you have two flowers, then put two flowers or smaller flowers and do that. Okay, I still got room back here to add some um, ornament balls and such, so I'm not going to worry about this space right here, over here where my hat is, over here. I'm not going to worry about this space because I've got ornament balls and such, little berries that I can still add on to this. And I'm just kind of fixing the flower. A little bit kind of curving the petals a little bit so they're not you know just shooting out there's a little part here that's missing a little little berry in the middle just a little stick so I'm just removing that so I don't see that wire okay and there we go that looks beautiful and then I've got this little bit here that I took off I'm gonna put some oh I got this leaf and this leaf I am going to put it back here just to bring some of this same greenery from the flower at the back. So, and this one I'm going to tuck it under here and glue it right there. 
And I'm going to put this side that has glue from where it was glued on before to the bow. I'm just going to put the glue on the top of that glue. So we put that facing down onto our arrangement right there. Pretty pine cone. I'm going to put that pine cone kind of coming out right here. But what I want to do is these little bits here that are left over, I'm going to take like five of them or so. Oh, look at that. This one's folded kind of right there and made two. Okay, I'm going to take about five of them and I'm going to kind of stick them coming out of here a little bit. Not too much. Maybe I'll shorten them. Make them shorter little bits and then I'll have more to glue. Yes, that's what I'll do. See what I've done? See how they're just kind of poking out of the garland right there at the bottom? That's just to bring that color down, down here. Okay, got a little bit more here. And usually what I do is I usually put my bow when I'm decorating something, like, uh, and I'm placing things. Um, I usually like to put my bow first so that I know not to put you know anything where the bow is going to go but because I know that my bow is going to go right here I'm just decorating back here and I'll put the bow at the end okay let me get some of these ornaments these ball ornaments that I've gotten here we go I a couple back here I'm going to take this little bit off I don't need that on there and just put glue on the uh, little tip there Slide these in. I'm going to get a satiny one. Take that bit off. More glue. And just decorate. Really, just decorate it however you want to decorate it. Look at that. Okay, so I had all this mesh, and I wanted to bring that into my arrangement because I wanted to coordinate. with. Now, I don't have to use all the meshes that I have. As a matter of fact, I'm probably not going to use this one, but I do like this one, the smaller white, and I like this gold. So I'm, this gold is a 10 inch wide, so I'm putting a 10 by 10, really is what I'm doing. And see how it curls up like that on its own, because it's been on the roll. So I'm going to take two ends, pull on it, and just go to the middle, and grab it like that, and just pinch it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of, uh, you can use chenille stems, uh, or here, let me go ahead and do that so you can see that. A little chenille stem, a little tiny piece, about two inches or so. And tie that around and twist it and then you can just ball up the little end of the chenille like so so now we can put some glue on there and tuck it in there so that's what I'm going to do with this gold that's going to add another layer of materials into our arrangement look at that I think it looks beautiful. I'm going to add some more because I want to put some coming out from the bottom here. So just do as many as you wish to do. And remember, we also have the tulle, the white and the pink that I bought. Oh, not the white, but it was like an off-white. And I want to use that. And I have that silver tulle. Oh, I have so much that I can put in here. And I don't have to use it all. But <laughs> I might because I wanted to have lots of stuff for my mom. Okay, let's tuck that one under here. Just because it looks so pretty. Look at that gold, I love it. I think I need to do another piece of it because it's so pretty. Pull on it, pinch it, little wire piece, get it on there. Glue. Tuck it in there, way in there. Make sure it's grabbing onto something. Look at that. That arrangement is looking beautiful already. Okay, I can actually put some more, but I'm going to move it out of the way because I'm going to put some of this white one in. I'm just going to cut like a little square of this. This is not a very wide mesh. Let's see. This is a six inch wide, and I, I cut about six, yeah, I cut it six inches, so um, do that. 
and that one actually I'm just going to pinch it just fold it and pinch it like that and then also get some what did I do? do you want to know? I folded it in half and I kind of just folded it in half and then just pinched it right here and then I'm just going to get some some of this chenille and wrap it around tight as I can I sometimes use my little uh, little pliers here. These are for jewelry making, but I use them for so many things. And I just squeeze wires so that I know that they're nice and tight. So I can create this little flutter of mesh or tulle, because that, I'm going to use the same technique for the tulle. And again, just tuck it here and there, wherever I feel like I, I need to have a little bit of this white. And I'm going to go ahead and put some more around and I'm going to do the same thing with the uh the tools which is that gold mesh that I showed you let me grab them sorry about my back there the gold the silver and then I've got this pink and this kind of creamy off-white color so I'm going to cut little squares little six by six probably form some more of those little fluttery bits and stick them in my arrangement and then we'll be back and put a bow and some got some berries we've got some more little ornaments a little pine cone lots of ribbon that we can use so we'll be back for that all right so I'm back I've added a lot of the uh, tool and some more of this gold mesh I just loved how this gold mesh looks I kind of went a little overboard in adding that in there and then I added the pink and the silver and the kind of gold yellowy off-white or whatever you want to call that creamy color of tool in there and also from the bow that I took apart when I grabbed the flower off of it, I had these little bits of uh, uh, loops that I had created with ribbon. I think these were like 10 inch pieces and then I folded them in half and then all I did was tie it around with ribbon right here. I mean wire, sorry, with wire or you can use a chenille stem. And um, then I could tuck these on my bow. So what I did is I'm recycling these and I've tucked them into my arrangement here and there. I've tucked one up here, as you can see. And then I've just kind of pinched, pinched it in just to make the loops a little more, you know, curly kind of a effect there. So I'm going to continue with uh, my arrangement. And what I need now is a bow right here in the front. And I'm going to use this ribbon that has these snowflakes. And that's what I use to make the main bow on my wreath. Now I also use the this kind of a mesh or see-through-y kind of a gold ribbon. This one right here. I also used that one on the wreath, but I'm not going to use it on here because I feel like I'm already using a lot of different materials and I've already used the ribbon there. So I want to make a bow to go right here. So I'm going to get about two yards because I'm not going to make a big, normally I use three yards for a big bow. I'm only going to do two yards this time and just make a little bit tighter bow. Okay, so I'm going to take a, a little end because I want to make a little tail and I want it to hang off and I'm going to have it touching the table. And then I'm just going to curl it up a little bit so that it's not touching the table. And I'm going to fold it up along the side here into the tip there. That's where I'm going to measure how long I want that tail to be. So then I'm just going to pinch it, make a loop, whatever size loop I want to make, pinch it and twist my Now, like I said, I was going to link down below how uh, to create hand, creating handmade bowls. I have a video just for that so that you can see how I do them up close. And uh, the now, what I'm going to do is continue making my little bow. Okay, so this, I'm just going to bring it up, make sure it's about the same size. A little bit more. There you go. It's about pinch and twist so that I always have the pretty side up. Make another bow. I'm going to take this little thing off my finger. It's not letting me do things properly. And my little finger is kind of sweating. Oh my goodness. <laughs> pinch, twist, make another bow going this way. The same size as this. Don't don't poof them up. Leave them flat so that you can make sure that they are almost the same size. I'm going to do one more loop and then what's left over is going to be tail. So I end up with five loops. Two on one side, three on the other. It doesn't matter because I am going to um, bring them around to like a little, little round bow. So I'm not going to worry. And I am going to cut just a little bit of this. I don't need a whole big piece of that... Um, chenille stem or a piece of wire. I just need about five, six inches. So now all I got to do is bring the, the loops around and I can poof and make a pretty bow just like that. See, that's a pretty little bow. And then I'm going to put 
lots of glue back here. Let me twist this tail so it's facing forward. I'm going to put lots of glue back here and glue him down right in there, okay? Now, there's still going to be some little spaces on each side of it, and I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm just going to glue them, glue him down. And let it dry. I'm going to take the little ends. You can cut them um, at an angle, leave them straight. What I do is I fold them in half from the edge up to the center. You cut out a little triangle so that you have this little dovetail kind of a thing happening. Let it dry before you mess with it. <laughs> and I'm messing with it. Okay. Let me do this because I'm just, I just got to get that. Okay, there we go. Get it back in there. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. In the meantime, I've got uh, two more of these little loops from this type of ribbon, and then I've got this stripe ribbon that I also want to incorporate. It's the one that I used here in, on my on my uh, as the uh, ribbon here on my hat. But I want some of these hanging down, so I'm just gonna hang. I'm just gonna cut some pieces that are about the same length as the other ribbon. I'm gonna cut two. Fold the ends, cut out that little triangle so that I have that little dovetail. Now I'm going to get these little ends, put some glue on them, tuck them in underneath there. I could have done these first actually, so that they could have ended up underneath the bow. Tuck them in and just glue them in place. Let them dry. And we're going to come back and poof up our bow once it's all dry. I've got these little bits, so I do want to tuck them, but I want to make another little, maybe three loops of bow here. I'm not going to worry about a tail, I'm just going to pinch it, make a loop, pinch it, twist, pinch it, twist, and one more loop, and just three. And just cut it, a little piece of chenille stem, roll that down flat against the little ribbon. Put some glue on that, and I'm going to tuck that right in there in the center of that other bow, and just let it dry. Okay, don't mess with it. I have a little loop here. I'm going to go ahead and cut another one just like it. Pinch the ends here. Wrap chenille stem on it, and then I can bring that ribbon onto other parts of my arrangement. So I'm just going to add over here underneath these little balls. Make sure I tuck it in so I don't see the chenille stem. What I do is when I'm tucking them in and then I poof up my little bow. Oops, sorry. When I poof up my little bow. What I do is I grab from the center and push down with my fingers and bring these up. So I kind of form like a little double loop kind of a thing here. And it's like a little heart actually, kind of. See? Just make these little loops like that. So it gives it volume to my bow, but it's not, you know, necessarily just shooting out aimlessly out of my arrangement. So it's not too long. So if you make little loops and you tuck them in and you feel like, oh, they're a little bit too big, the loops, just push in the center and loop it up. So I just added a little bit right here and right here. I could add more, but you know what? I'm going to go ahead and stop right there. This is a lot. Okay. These two loops that I have, I'm going to tuck them in, one back here behind the bow, and they are a little bit big, and I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to just fold it in so it makes like a, like a little heart, if you will. Put lots of glue, and you're going to need lots of glue if you're using a mini glue gun, by the way, so make sure you get yourself a brand new, big, gigantic packet of 100 or more sticks in there, because you're going to use, you're not going to use 100 sticks, but you're going to use a lot of glue. A lot of little elements here and there to glue onto here. And I'm just putting that one in here just to kind of give this more body. Now that I'm here, I can go ahead and poof up these, these loops here on my bow. And these I don't have to fold them in because they're just the right size. So I'm just poofing them up. The one in the center as well. See that? I don't want to cover this little, little part right here because I want to be able to see this this ribbon going across here. So I'm just doing that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little piece of garland, a couple of little branches off of here. One, 
And let's do three pieces. I'm trying to get it from the very end. Here we go. Those little pieces. And I'm going to tuck those under here because I need that dark green down here. And I don't want to see the, the very bottom here so plain. So that's why I'm adding these little bits. But I also don't want to cover this ribbon. I want to be able to see it because a lot of it is covered. I think that's good. But back here where I have this seam, I'm going to put one right there just to give it a little bit of coverage. It's not really going to cover it. Just a little bit. There we go. Just to cover where the ribbon was meeting and it didn't look too attractive. I have one more of these. I could tuck it in, but let's see. What about underneath all of this? Is that too much? Yeah, let's go ahead and just leave that out. We'll go ahead and stop right there. That's enough. And now I'm going to make sure my little tails are hanging down. So I'm just bending them a little bit, curling them a, curling them a bit. Open them up a little bit. Just, just curling them and kind of crunching them up a little bit. See what I did? Just crunch them up a little bit. All right. Now... We have the very last of our little ornaments here. And guess what I found? I found a pretty little pink bird. And I've got these berries as well. These berries, I'm going to cut them up into individual smaller stems. And just be careful when you're pulling them apart because they kind of stick together here. Okay, that's a good one here. I'm going to get this really long one. I'm going to go underneath here, like where I tucked in all these other stuff, all these other items. Get that under there. I'm going to put one on this side and then just a few more up in the top. Look at that. That is a lot. I want this angel. Isn't he beautiful? Or she is beautiful. I don't want to cover this ribbon, but I'm going to put it right on here. And I'm going to have to hold it for a very long time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the snowflake up here on the top just for some decor up there. Why not cover up that the fact that I didn't iron out my satin and I've got that little, <laughs> little folded it part there that I didn't iron out. And on top of that, take out the little pick. I don't need that. Right on top of there, right on the edge up here, I'll put the little bird. He's so pretty, or she's so pretty, whatever it is. It's beautiful. Just because it's pink doesn't mean it's a girl. Okay. I'm going to take these little miniature ornament balls. Not all of them, but I'm going to take some of these. And I'm going to coaster them. I'm going to put that on the garland that I put down here, because it's not going to cover that ribbon. Put two there, two or three, doesn't matter. Two right there, oh, that looks so pretty, oh my goodness. I'm gonna put it nearby that other one that I just put in there. Oh, and I did put in that pine cone, I'll put the pine cone right here, kind of underneath this flower right here. That is so much already on there. I think I'm going to stop there. And all I'm going to do is add my angel. And i got to put lots and lots of glue on him. So, tell me what you think. Were you inspired by this? I hope you were. I hope that you feel that, yes, you can create this. Use leftover pieces of anything that you might have. Pieces of fabric. If you don't want to go do the whole covering with the fabric, you feel that's just too much. Then just use a, a, the stiff felt. The stiff felt forms a really nice hat. You can use a fun foam. And then you can cover it with laces and you won't see too much of that. And uh, make it on a candlestick or without a candlestick. I don't have to spend a lot of money. I did. It's for my mom. It's special. So tell me what you think. Leave a nice comment down below. Give me a big old thumbs up. Please subscribe and uh, share on your social medias. And as always, enjoy.